What does Young Dom, Honey Bun and Blair White have in common? Well, for starters, they're both gorgeous young women, and I mean that genuinely, but they're also mean-spirited and both currently pushing an anti-LGBT agenda. Because there is no way you can convince me that this person genuinely identifies as a woman, respects womanhood, knows what it's about, embodies, you know, a woman and everything that a woman is and can be and again just values it and treats it as part of their identity this is at the very least a mockery and at the very best a full-on offense some kind of criminal sexual offense equivalent to flashing While watching one of Honeybond's recent videos, I was thrown back in time to 2020 during a very particular controversy Blair White had landed herself in. She had made a video on a powerlifting all-time world record holder, gender fluid and non-binary trans woman, Janae Marie Kroc. You might actually remember her. In this video, Blair lied, stating that today was going back and forth, competing against both men and women. And something we don't often see is that Janae actually went back post-transition and competed against men just because, I guess. Like, it was kind of like, she's gone back and forth competing with men and women based on I don't know what. Don't get me wrong, mistakes happen, but it's very difficult to believe this was just an innocent mistake when she's showing one particular Instagram post by Janae on screen to back up her story. She did not show the caption in its entirety and we can only assume that it was done on purpose because if she were to scroll down just slightly, her entire narrative would fall to pieces. In the very same Instagram post, Post, Janae Marie Croc contradicts Blair White completely and I quote since I'm certain many of you are wondering and will be asking I'll address it now I will be competing in the men's division in parenthesis notice that I did not say as a male and no this does not change the fact that I'm trans slash gender fluid slash non-binary this also says nothing about my beliefs concerning trans athletes and fair competition only what I feel is right for me so along with everything else that I feel is important to talk about, you can expect to see more posts regarding training, nutrition and the like. She's literally doing exactly what conservatives are saying that they want trans athletes to do, that being compete against men. But still, Janae Marie Croc is being blasted for competing at all. It's almost like they don't really care about women and fair competition at all. Go figure. In a very similar vein, young dumb Honeybun has made multiple videos claiming that people are gaining acceptance amongst LGBTQ+, while she's excluding very vital information. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to refer to them as minor attracted people, not in order to disguise my intentions and normalize attraction to minors, which um, I do not condone for the record because apparently that needs to be stated. I think being attracted to minors is very, very bad, but it's rather because if I use the word p too many times in the same video, I fear I'm gonna get clocked by YouTube and be paid a very special visit by Suzanne where she takes me out to the back you know I'm insinuating that she's gonna shoot if you actually google minor attracted people and do a little bit of research like I was doing before I started filming this video um, under all of the like meanings and descriptions and kind of the formal things just to let people know that this is just another word for people if you actually go scroll down under the videos there is a, a, a the first the first web page after definitions and meanings and after a forum asking why it's getting traction again why it's getting support is supporting minor attracted people like, supporting it and do you know who hosts this website and who kind of the author of the website is who carries this article the primary prevention of child sexual abuse Primary prevention of child sexual abuse is telling you how to support your local sales. And they even tell you that they are part of this. They pull you into this forest and say, just if you are unaware because you're ignorant, which causes harm to this marginalized group, um, in, ca in case you're unaware, the distinction between a pedophile and a map, because they're 
two different things. The two different things, right? There's a distinction. A pedophile is someone with an attraction to prepubescent children, while a minor attraction is an umbrella term for someone attracted to minors in general. They also then say that the majority of those who sexually abuse children are not attracted to them. While that information may be difficult to believe, it comes from a number of sources, and then they don't give you the sources. They don't link any. So usually in academia, right after you finish that sentence, there should be a bracket that it should tell you, for example, Smith and Watson, 1992, or something like that, right? And then you can click on it. It'll it's there. It's right there. How could you have possibly missed this, Sarah? Some of you might be confused, some of you might be wondering why the primary prevention of child sexual abuse is advocating for support of minor attracted people, or are they trying to equate them to LGBTQ+. You may breathe a sigh of relief, cause uh, that's not at all what's going on. In the first paragraph, right above the one she did include, they explain one way of preventing child sexual abuse is by ensuring that minor attracted people have the resources they need. But you might be wondering what this means and what it looks like. Obviously this site is about preventing abuse. Supporting minor attracted people means ensuring that they have the resources they need to make healthy, law-abiding choices. That's it. Contrary to what conservative fearmongers might say, and preventing abuse should be a bipartisan issue we can all support, having those resources absolutely should be accepted. If you scroll further down, they include what experts say. This idea is not new. In fact, three major experts in preventing sexual harm answered questions about this during a special IAMA, Ask Me Anything session on Reddit. Maya Christopher is the executive director of the Association for the Treatment of Sexual Abuses. Karen Baker is the director of the National Sexual Violence Resource Center. And Michael Seto is one of the foremost experts on pedophilia and editor of Sexual Abuse, a journal of research and treatment. The overwhelming opinion in the professional sexual violence prevention community is that helping minor attracted people by offering peer slash professional support is the best way to ensure that minor attracted people do not harm children and suggests that reducing stigma against minor attraction will help this endeavor and protect children. This can be seen across numerous pieces of research as well. For every minor attracted person that gains a community of like-minded peers that are dedicated to remaining law-abiding, they have social support from people that understand them and issues unique to minor attracted people. For every minor attracted person that gains professional help, they have the potential of finding a bigger support network. In doing so, they lessen the risk factors like depression, anxiety, and self-hate that can lead to acting out against a child or themselves. We can also help them avoid ideas that can lead to offending. When a minor attracted person can get support without harming a child, it is not only a win for that person, but also for society as a whole. Minor attracted people will not come forward for help in any meaningful way as long as we hate them for having an attraction they did not choose and confuse them with people who harm children. I'll make sure to put a link in the description where you can look for yourself and check their sources. Now that you have the entire context, we should be able to agree that it is disgusting that people like young Dom Honeybon are attempting to compare this to a fight for LGBTQ plus equality. Though they never overtly condemn attraction to minors, it is very, very clear that they're not trying to normalize it in the same way we're pushing for the normal normalization of queerness because it's not the same it's just not the same it's the difference between normalizing completely harmless desires and destigmatizing something to the point where they feel safe enough to admit to these urges to a professional without the fear that it's gonna completely ruin their life. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Some of you might be watching this video and not even know who Young Dumb Honeybun is, and I wouldn't blame you because she grew her platform focusing on quite a niche genre. Amberlynn Readology. So my question is, how do people survive in saunas but not like in the car? I have 
drinking Sani water. I can't tell if that's that thing in Paris or if that's a giraffe. The Eiffel Tower? <laughs> yes. <laughs> And if you don't know who that is, Amberlynn Reed started off as a weight loss YouTuber that turned into a weight gain YouTuber. Although she pushes out absolutely boring vlogs, she has managed to gain an audience which, quite frankly, hates her. Some of them started making videos pretty much gossiping about Amberlynn, anything from health to hoarding tendencies and relationships. There are no short of topics and sometimes it even borders harassment like this can't be healthy for any of us. What justifies this kind of behavior in the eyes of the public though is that Amberlynn Reed herself and their gossip channels are somewhat codependent. Like I'm 31 years old and I still have people harassing me about my body. I don't know, I just find it to be unfair. Like I previously stated, Amberlynn Reed's videos on their own are boring to sit through, especially to your average person like me. Uh, I swear I'm normal. Luckily, some people condense these videos down to Amberlynn, contradicting herself, straight up lying, mispronouncing words, etc. Others do commentary style videos like Zachary Michael, that's a big one. Yeah, they're the only one that comes to mind. <laughs> Some of these people even get more views than Amberlynn Reed herself. And let's be real here, her views would plummet if people stopped making videos about her. People aren't there because they want to see the new journals she bought or hear her poems. They're there for one thing, and that thing is drama. Get away from me! You're scared of me. You're a monster! Look at what you did! Should I not be scared? I I'm not justifying it, I'm just telling you how it is. It is a mess. Enter young dumb honeybun, otherwise known as Sarah, an educated woman. An educated immigrant woman who has he come here with, with no language. language. Who, who is, is now speaking, speaking two languages fluently. Bitch, get the fuck off your high horse. I learned to speak English fluently by working for a Minecraft YouTuber. It's really not that difficult in positions like ours. It is true, however, that she is an educated woman, which I cannot say for myself. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not a woman, neither am I educated. What I can say, however, is that I've never lied about my qualifications, I'm open and honest about being a fucking dumbass, and a proud one at that. I'd rather be a dumbass than an asshole, not sure if the same can be said about Sarah. I'm in med school. I work full time getting into medical school earlier last year and then having to move across the country in order to go to that medical school and then um, work on my second degree. And I got a job offer um, in a laboratory once I finish my second degree. And if you don't know, I am a medical student. I am currently in med school. Why do you lie about being in medical school? I got into a medical school and then I um, changed at the last minute, so I hope that helps. I got into Queen Mary's Medical School and then I was offered a PhD there and I declined both. <laughs> because I can't afford it and then I just didn't tell anyone. Some people were like, are you in med school? I was like, you know what, I don't need people to dox me like they did last time. So I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And if you don't know, I am a medical student. I am currently in med school. I am an educated woman. She has a bachelor's degree in psychology, which she is not shy to remind you of. I do have a bachelor's degree um, of science in psychology and I am currently studying for my master's degree in psychiatry as well. What makes her stick out from the other Amblin Reed commentators is that she incorporates her education into her content. I don't want to get too deep into it, but all I'll say is that a lot of people are suspicious of her so-claimed achievements and credentials. It's just a bit odd that there's absolutely no trace of it. When you google her full name, all that really comes up is videos of her bullying a mentally ill woman. Amberlynn Reed is a very, very, very disgusting person. She's actively crying crocodile tears whilst begging for sympathy and she has been for a few years now and she is the furthest from a victim I have seen 
in a while. Anne Boleyn is so far removed from the real world, it has not and it will never fail to completely surprise me, astound me, blow my mind just how much this girl has no idea about the real world, about how it works, how incredibly privileged she has been and lucky she has been to be able to kill herself on camera for thousands. Is that your, is that your achievements? Wouldn't really uh, brag about that if I were you. The only reason I'm bringing this up is because from the very beginning, when I first stumbled upon young Dom Honeybun, I just couldn't wrap my head around why someone who's supposedly educated on this with the prospects of a future career would be so openly and confidently just nasty towards someone like Amberlynn Reed under the guise of trying to help her. You, if anyone, should know that being hypercritical of a stranger online isn't gonna encourage them to get better. If anything, you're just ruining your chances at getting hired with your face attached to this absolute flaming garbage content. How incredibly privileged she has been and lucky she has been to be able to kill herself on camera for thousands. At best, this is low tier entertainment and at worst, it's just straight up harassment. Usually she talks down on Amber, comparing her to herself, which can be seen in the now infamous coconut rant. Hey girl, I'm in med school. I work full time. I have a degree. I have a whole ass beautiful man by my side. I have a family that loves me. We all take care of each other. We love each other. My skin is clear. My makeup is flawless. I am living my best life. My hair is growing. I smell like coconut oil. I am living my best life. And now, I will go further. I will go beyond the superficial, beyond what the eye can see. I am an educated woman. I am an educated immigrant woman who has came here with no language, who is now speaking two languages fluently, who has a career, who has ambitions and goals in life. Regardless of the coinage that I make on YouTube of your name, I have a successful life. <laughs> me when I brag that my family loves me. Sorry, not all of us were born into loving families, Sarah. Wow, how is that something you're gonna berate someone for? And you are a despectful piece of shit. As you can see, young Dom Honeybun is very self-congratulatory. There's nothing wrong with being proud of your own achievements, but you don't have to put others down to feel better about yourself. Especially not Amber. Like, it's not that difficult to be better than Amberlynn. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that was mean, but it's kind of true. Bend over, I'm about to handcuff your ass. <laughs> We're all better than her, Sarah. Like, that's not a brag. <laughs> now, Sarah comes off as someone who you'd expect to be more liberal, at least at first glance. She's young, she's an immigrant woman, coconut, heavily tattooed, and likes to at least pretend to care about the less fortunate. See the time Amberlynn mentioned exercising by walking around her kitchen island, which according to Sarah was a big f**k you to her audience. Did you ever think about the kitchen island less people in your audience, Amber? And you are a dis- Back for? Thank God we have someone like Sarah standing up for us in desperate times like these. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for your kindness. Where I'm getting at is that Sarah's outrage is very performative, and that could be said for a lot of people. Whichever allows her to shit on Amberlynn Reed is what she's gonna advocate for. So, what is she? What does she identify as? Uh, someone was like, are you a conservative? I don't, I'm not into politics. I don't like sit and read things about politics. I don't identify with any side of politics. Um, I simply have my own opinions. Um, I read a lot of things from both sides. I read a lot of things from people in general without knowing what their political identity is like. And it's really not very big from where I come from. It's a privilege to not care about politics. When you've got nothing on the line, it's easy to take a backseat because it doesn't matter either way, you've got nothing to lose. Unfortunately, politics is everywhere, whether you realize it or not, and there's almost always an agenda 
being pushed. Being ignorant to the fact is not the brag you think it is. And if anything, you're telling us that, hey, I'm easily influenced by propaganda because I'm unable to recognize it. The recent shift in focus of her content does not come as a surprise to me because she is an asshole by nature. How incredibly privileged she has been and lucky she has been to be able to kill herself on camera for thousands. This is the culture war. This is the new skeptic community. This is the all right pipeline, baby. This might come as a surprise to you, my dear viewer, but I don't watch Young Dumb Honeybun on the regular. Instead, I was made aware of this and inspired by the YouTuber Megan Ann and her video Young Dumb Honeybun being transphobic for 15 minutes, which she was inspired to make after watching a video by Mika's Rhetoric. There's a lot of inspiration going on here. Love to see it. Yeah, that's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Woo! Might insert any points they made that I agree with rather than just echoing it. I don't know. Mayan's video in particular focused on one titled The Trans Teacher with Huge Prosthetic Breasts. Was it a hoax? Does it matter? No, I don't think so. Trans being in quotation marks, by the way, because, yeah. What we really need right now is to normalize questioning the validity of someone's gender identity because that hasn't been done before. It's not like it's a part of the trans experience having to constantly stand up for yourself and insist that you're really trans because no one believes you ever. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a Canadian high school teacher who has been recorded multiple times by the students teaching, I think this was woodwork and like tech, with these huge prosthetic breasts. And I mean, they're enormous. They're nothing like I have ever seen. And I watch RuPaul's Drag Race. So that's saying something. Be controversial. Okay, this is where I started to take an issue with the video immediately. Um, was even like kind of comparing trans women to drag queens is unacceptable. Trans women are not drag queens. Trans women are not men dressed up like women. Trans women are women and I will die on that hill. I do not care. Um, when you are having the conversation about trans people, particularly trans women, the conversa- the- the topic of drag should not be anywhere in it. Should- it just should not. While comparing a trans woman's breasts to those of drag queens might be distasteful, it wouldn't exactly warrant an entire video like this. Alas, it's only foreshadowing the hateful and misled rant that's about to ensue. This was so incredibly controversial and disturbing because anyone with two brain cells that can rub together can see how incredibly inappropriate this is. More fuel was added to the fire after numerous articles actually reported that the high school um, that this was happening at said that it was illegal to criticize the teacher because they were trans and under the new bill C-16 the Canadian Human Rights Act has explicitly prohibited discrimination based on gender identity and gender expression which means that if this person identifies as a woman and they want to express their womanhood in this way then you are not allowed to criticize it or discriminate against Against them and for example say like you're not allowed to express yourself in this way this is you know disturbing or this is inappropriate you're not allowed to do that anymore or at least that's my understanding you can you know feel free to correct me in the comments if you are Canadian um, or if you have a better understanding of the bill. <laughs> this is such a throwback to 2016 when Bill C-16 was first introduced. Everyone was losing their shit screeching, they're making it illegal to misgender someone! Use the pronoun bigot or die! Electric chair. People from outside of the country get this law wrong all of the time. Canada. Bill C-16 uh, C and the Charter of Rights and Freedoms is saying that it's the element of the gender expression to, to deny them, uh, to deny, let's say, this woman that their gender identity, like your comments are doing, can be, that would be, let's say, a case for being able to fire somebody or to be able to, um, you know, have formal punishment of some sort. It's not saying, like, that's why people like Steven Crowder, so this is the pipeline that people are talking about, will we'll take bills like this and pull them to their extreme. Like, if you misgender somebody, you go to jail. That's not true. Or in the case of this teacher, the thing is, is that 
there are, um it's a dress code issue if you're going to get into that like um the shirts are too thin for example that's something that can be uh, talked about with the teacher they're saying it's on the grounds of the that it's because she's transgender but again right wing people just misconstrue things and she's falling right for that pipeline and again this is basic stuff that when you're an academic you learn in like media literacy courses and research courses and and there we have it it's not a crime to ask a trans woman to not wear cartoonishly big prosthetic tits what bill c16 does however is protect her from being discriminated against on the basis of her being trans sarah shows articles claiming that the school supported this woman's decision to wear these bazongas and what i would like to know is what exactly this support looks like did they actually go yeah we support her decision to wear massive fucking tits with thin shirts that exposes her volcano nipples it's so right to do so as a trans woman because trans people can get away with anything or is this just their way of saying that the school wanted to deal with matters privately rather than throwing this trans woman to the wolves to make a spectacle and people like you Sarah can use this as anecdotal evidence and go people are pretending to be trans for the fetish part me trans people are else they were using a loophole to act out the sex sexual fantasies in front of children and in a way which is what I believe include the general public including children in some kind of sick twisted kink fantasy whatever it may be because there is no way you can convince me that this person genuinely identifies as a woman respects womanhood knows what it's about embodies you know a woman and everything that a woman is nice turf talking point listen listen she's not transphobic for saying that those tits are way too inappropriate to be wearing in public especially around children i mean i wouldn't want my children to see that what is transphobic however is going on the whole last rant about how this is someone pretending to be a woman for sex pleasure around children because she's perpetuating this very transphobic debate about whether someone is a true transsexual in parentheses valid versus an autogynophile not valid being trans doesn't grant you any privileges that cis people don't have that's exactly why i don't care to distinguish these so-called fake chances from the real chances because despite what right-wing media would like you to believe identifying with the label trans doesn't absolve you of sexual misconduct wearing those breast prosthetics to school was extremely inappropriate and there should be consequences end of end of that we should have left it at that. Now, aside from the fact that somewhere on the internet, you will 100% be called a bigot and a transphobe for even questioning this person's um, identity, for even questioning the minority, majority um, belonging status quo and already, you know, just even, even just asking questions is, is nowadays wrong. Can we just take a second? Even asking questions about an already established almost like an ideology is already wrong like you're not allowed to do that you can't do that and so there's a lot of people who don't have answers or who think a different way but they're not allowed to say it and they're scared to say it and i'm not surprised there's so much backlash nowadays i mean people are getting cancelled left and right for things they've said 10 years ago first of all you're being called a bigot and a transphobe because you are glad we could all agree on that secondly you are allowed to ask questions which you never did it's just that a lot of people don't take too kindly when you walk up in here and go you're all p and p files i don't know i just thought you might not know how to interact with another person without being super hostile after watching some of your videos i'm just giving you some friendly advice sarah just a taste of your own medicine bitch. now i want to talk about was this fake was this a hoax and does it matter so in another article basically they say that i think this was on 4chan or some other anonymous forum apparently one of the students who's actually in this person's class said that this was just a prank right this was all just a prank this was all a ruse 
we got you and this person's actually anti-walk and they were basically showing you how ridiculous the entire thing is one i don't believe that for a second two if it is true then this person literally just got caught and it sounds like they went oh oh this that that wasn't a fetish that was a prank yes that was a prank that was that wasn't real well you thought that was real no i was making a, a huge social social political statement <laughs> there's no confirmation whether this is actually a prank or not and 4chan is literally the least reliable source but i would absolutely not be surprised if that was the case in fact when i first saw it i was convinced that it was a transphobe trolling because i'm so used to their bait and attempts at making us look bad like steven crowder dressing up as a woman and going into planet fitness so this week there was a big controversy at planet fitness when this man ooh person wanted to use the ladies restroom one lady felt uncomfortable complained at which point her membership was promptly revoked because you know tolerance the transgender community touts this as a major victory where many women feel less safe so i decided to push the boundaries and see just where planet fitness's non-judgment of transgender people ends and their harsh judgment of successful athletes begins we call this our trans meeting or Graham Linehan, who makes a mockery of trans women on the queer dating app Her, where he describes himself as a furry slash adult baby who grew up with porn. These reactionaries take on the identity of a trans woman, making a mockery of it to prove that any asshole can pretend to be trans for nefarious purposes. I will never understand the logic of these people. D do they think that being trans is a free get out of jail card? We face the same consequences as any cis person, if not more consequences. It really doesn't have to be about gender. Cis people shouldn't be allowed to wear ridiculously big boob prosthetics the same way trans people shouldn't end of end of conversation i solved it i solved world hunger i solved racism i solved homophobia i've solved climate change everyone go thank mug and mile on twitter.com oh my god wow but if you check your channel you'll see that this video isn't out of nowhere she first dipped her toes in the reactionary pool with new woke scooby-doo as people enraged and so it, it's something i grew up with and it's something that i kind of was thinking like is this it like has the woke culture got to one of my favorite cartoons and has just completely ripped it to shreds I'm gonna let you decide. Honestly, I don't have much to say about this video in particular because it's such a stupid thing to get upset over. This series is just an attempt at maximizing profit by appealing to nostalgia and a diverse crowd of people. The rest of us would have appreciated an original series with brand new characters for representation rather than race swapping already established ones as much as the next person. But that's not what we got. Sarah, that's not what we f***ing got. I don't understand why you act like the woke mob appeared with pitchforks demanding that they make Velma lesbian. Alas, Scissor Sisters in Scooby-Doo is the least of our worries now. Something wicked is brewing on the Chinese app known as TikTok. Teenagers with pronouns. Not just any pronouns. Neil pronouns! Ah! Yeah, that's right. Ro ro raggy. New pronouns, clown and rat spark discussion. Obese people have thin privilege. I am so excited to see what Sarah has to add to the conversation. I'm sure that it's something of value and not just conservative fear mongering. Are a little bit too complicated to fit in my bio. Pronouns that I use are they them she her and clown clown self i prefer a mixture of those um but i do know that some people have a really hard time mixing different pronouns together and if that is something you really struggle with i would prefer that you not exclusively use she her starting off strong with a tiktok that has four to five likes so oh, and would you look at that i almost missed it right there the watermark lips of TikTok interesting source Sarah very interesting source 
For those of you that don't know already, Libs of TikTok is a far-right anti-LGBT Twitter account who was behind a harassment campaign against hospitals and doctors providing trans healthcare for children, which literally led to bomb threats. These are your sources. These are your sources. Literal anti-LGBTQ plus propaganda. May I also add that as a boring binary trans guy who just wants to transition and fit into society's box of me without challenging the norm, I do not give a flying f about those who use neo pronouns because they're not harming anyone. They want to live their life and I want to live my life. We support each other because together we're stronger. And this video should just kind of flip flops between talking about fat activism goes too far and trans extremists. Very much reminiscent of the skeptic community back in the day. Remember people making videos on BuzzFeed tries man spreading and apparently that was signaling the fall of a western civilization at the same time as some basement dwelling 4 channel was making triggered feminists compilations. I'm triggered. She's like an edgy 15 year old, um, not like other girls who just discovered a uh, shoe on head. Everyone is in this big race to be the most progressive and the most open-minded and the most oppressed. It is just a big it, it's the oppression olympics. Everybody is forcing themselves into the oppression olympics and they are naked. Girl you mingle with actual Nazis. Shut your mouth. Now I've also seen a lot of discourse in terms of pronouns, neo pronouns, gender expression, gender identity. I think this is such a hot topic in society in general that you cannot avoid it. Like at one point someone is going to say something, at one point your light bulb in your head's going to go off and be like, hang on a second, what's happening? Like what, what are we talking about? Um, and so that is something that has been debated everywhere. I have not heard it being debated so heavily in the UK and Eastern Europe as much as I have in America so I'm not sure if there's any kind of geographical factors to this I have not looked this up however again if you are an expert you can let me know down below oh my god guys this mother literally lives on turf island and she's like I don't know transphobia and anti-trans rhetoric is uh, uh, so new to me I, I guess it's only happening in the US babe babe you literally live on the island that invented transphobia what do you mean it's not as talked about as in the US do, do you think that it's not happening because you're not seeing it like tell me you don't have trans friends without telling me you don't have trans friends. Go on. Go on, bitch. Have you ever considered that maybe you only started caring once it swept across America? Because Americentrism is rotting all of our brains. No? No? I honestly, I'm just waiting on her to go full mask off. Anyone want to make bets as to whether she's gonna go turbo turf mode anytime soon? Like, sound off in the comments, because she's been echoing the very same sentiments as them. DISGUSTING! Or, perhaps, she's just gonna leave the internet completely. Say anything, someone somewhere will be enraged by it. Someone will. Guarantee you. And so I think that I can see why people, there's this trend of going back to almost like traditionalism. Like where people are like, you know what, I just want to like stay at home, make bread, have kids and like not have a phone. Because I've heard people say it and I've seen people do it and I understand it. I think there's a huge push on like going back to also to religion i see a lot of people turn into spirituality because i think a lot of people feel lost they don't know how to navigate all of this and i can see why young people especially and especially women would be going back to religion spirituality meditation christianity whatever it may be because i feel like there's a lot of people who just can't navigate all this and i wouldn't be you know it's not like it's not rocket science to me. Seeing all of this, 
You got a man, you got a kitchen, go bake some bread and get knocked up, I say. Bye, Sarah, you won't be missed. Good luck with your future career. Speaking of, if I were you, I would delete my channel, because it wouldn't look good if future employees would do a background check. I don't know, just saying, just some advice. No, I don't think so. And um, by the way, Nia Pronouns is by no means as big of a phenomenon as she makes it out to be. If you keep seeing it, examples of them, it's either because you're a neo-pronoun user yourself, or because you're a conservative freak fear monger. You almost have to go look for them because they're so rare, and that says more about you. Do you just want to be outraged? Dare I say? Triggered? I'm triggered. If people really are wanting to return to tradition, then I promise you it's not because of neo pronouns or fat activists. Get a f***ing grip. Start blocking people if you have to. Alas, Sarah's not done with her transphobic grifting. She has even more examples of neo-divergent people doing odd things and she's gonna pin it on trans people yet again. Damn you transgender cult! When will your terror on traditional gender norms end? People are now identifying as animals and you have to accept it. In the thumbnail you can see none other than Naya Okami. You probably know her from this classic. On all levels except physical, I am a wolf. Since then she has actually transitioned into a woman, not a wolf just to be clear. But if you've been on the internet for I don't know the past couple of seven years, you know that this stuff is really really old. The reason we're not talking about it anymore isn't because we're just accepting that everyone is transitioning into animals left and right. It's because we had our initial reaction. Everyone was making videos about it and treated them like a modern freak show. Then we realized it's a very isolated community who's not doing any harm and it's kind of f***ed up that we're just bullying a bunch of neurodivergent people who were coping in the best way they could. People even recognized Naya after Sarah used her in a previous video and they were trying to explain that uh, this is like old news, Sarah. And so in my last video we have actually included a picture, or I believe it was actually a video, of this person who says on all levels except physical, I am a wolf. And a lot of people in my comment section were like, oh yeah, this is from a vine, this is so funny, like this is not for real. Um, but I have actually found more videos of I believe the same person because they do look very similar so please correct me if I'm wrong where they do genuinely say no like this is it like I communicate with wolves I can read the body cues and they're like running all fours and so it's becoming very difficult for me to distinguish whether or not it is a joke or if it's part of actual identity that people now have. It's kind of up that she's trying to relate this to so-called transspeciesism because from my understanding Naya is in claiming that her identifying as a wolf is some form of trans identity of its own. She is trans because she is a trans woman who also happens to identify as a wolf. <laughs> It's completely different. But if you do a quick Google search, you can easily find that she is indeed a functioning member of society. Not that you have to be to be worthy of empathy and respect, but I'm just saying. A non-human animal on a personal integral level. Now this isn't to say that we're delusional. I, I don't physically believe that I'm a wolf. It's more of like a, spirit, a spiritual and psychological identification as a wolf. Um, so I'm, I'm completely aware I'm human, right? Like, I go to work every day, I don't, you know, necessarily dress like this to work. God forbid wolf girls do anything these days. If you ask me, this is no weirder than Christianity. It just happens to be very unique. It's harmless. It's fun. And I can see where she's coming from. She seems like a cool person to be around, in my humble opinion. How valid is that identity? I also want to mention that there's been a huge discussion about people saying this identity or that identity is valid because the people who genuinely use it are people who, for example, have autism or are in some way neurodivergent. And in my opinion, it is incredibly insulting and also infantilizing to 
those people, individuals who I have met, who I know who have autism, are incredibly strong, serious, intelligent people who would be very much insulted by people that say these things, that say things like, oh, well, you know, this person's autistic, so just let them be a wolf for their life. Let them be, you know, a wolf or a tiger or a bird. I think it's incredibly infantilizing. Well, autism and neurodivergence can look very different from person to person. Some people are able to mask it and you would have no way of knowing they were autistic by looking at them, while others are 25 and playing Star Wars in their mother's backyard. <laughs> I don't know, it just be like that sometimes. Only one example that she has brought forth is someone that is trying to legally be recognized as a dog, which hasn't been granted by the way. The rest are rather more theory in types and listen, I don't care if you think it's weird, they've been around for a long time and I have yet to see them actually cause any legitimate harm to anyone. I can totally see how certain autistic people would genuinely feel a strong connection to a certain animal to the point where they identify with it in the way Naya described. Not in a physical sense but rather psychologically or spiritually because I know from experience just how isolating autism can be. Even when you're surrounded by people, you feel like the other. Some of us go through horrific abuse in order to train us to behave normally. So to me, it's no wonder someone would feel a stronger connection to, let's say, wolves than humans. You'd have to be a lot more specific about what the harm is rather than I don't know, it's just being weird. Sometimes autistic people just do weird things. Like, it's what we do. I'm sorry. I was honestly expecting a bunch of people just each other off in the comments, but to my pleasant surprise, a lot of them were actually calling her out. Quoting, Man or not, no one gets to have a say in what someone else does with their body. Really weird way to compare and contrast. I've been a viewer for a long time now, but I'm starting to see you talk about topics that anti-LGBT conservatives use as dog whistles for their beliefs. This feels awfully close to transhumanism, to the coincidence. Used to watch a whole lot of your videos back when you first started. I had to stop because of work-related stuff, but coming back to this wasn't nice at all. I would have loved if you could have done a bit more research on this topic without decontextualizing it as much, educating yourself and others more. I don't really have much more to say that hasn't already been said in other comments. This is just mean as many other things you've said in the near past and I'm a bit disappointed. Plus this has already been up for discussion a whole lot of times and it's just pointless to fall again and again in this moral panic every few months. This is strange of you, Sarah. Otherkin is very old news. I remember seeing videos on the topic in the mid-2010s. It's certainly not a huge group and it feels very odd to focus on a community that's filled with mentally ill and traumatized people and target them. I thought you were a therapist. Shouldn't you know better? <laughs> Wow, you went down the alt right pipeline fast. Honestly, that was my reaction too. She's speed running the alt right pipeline. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. After picking up on her more and more blatant reactionary tendencies, her own audience have turned against her. I think what I've said so far is relatively agreeable, but the two last videos I want to talk about, I'm gonna have to be uh, a lot more careful with my wording, because people love taking others out of context. I'm about to circle back to the very beginning and once again address her two videos focusing on people attracted to minors. Or p-files, as she insists we call them. Look, if there's one thing every normal person can agree upon, it's that anyone who sexually exploits a child in any way needs to burn in hell. Electric chair. So I don't exactly blame anyone for seeing red immediately once someone mentions minor attracted people because we immediately think child predator naturally. In her video, Expert tries to normalize 
Ophelia by comparing it to LGBT community. She's reacting to this clip in particular. Hi folks, my name is Miranda. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a licensed professional counselor and sex therapist in Erie, Pennsylvania. And today I want to talk about minor attracted persons. And I want to talk about minor attracted persons because they are probably the most vilified population of folks in our culture. Before anyone shits their pants about this, I need you to take two breaths and calm down. Are you with me? Are you with me? Good. First of all, I've been searching high and low for the original clip because I do remember seeing it when it first blew up. If my memory serves me correctly, it was even longer and by the end of it, Miranda clearly stated that acting upon these urges were wrong. But of course, that's been cut out and plastered on social media accounts like Libs of TikTok. What I really would like to know is uh, the context of all of this. Where was this posted and for what audience? Because I've got a hunch it wasn't exactly posted in an LGBT support group. I I I'm sure you guys already know this, but I'm gonna say it anyways. Attraction to children is nowhere comparable to being LGBT. Nothing about our identities as LGBT people harms anyone when acted upon. Like, no one has ever died from gay sex. Oh dear, I worded that quite poorly. You know what I mean though. However, no one chooses to be attracted to children, like, why would they? Why would anyone go, hmm, I kinda wanna belong to a universally hated group of people. And, and this is where a lot of people, Miranda included, make the mistake of comparing it to LGBT people. No one chooses to be gay, no one chooses to be a lesbian, no one chooses to be bi, no one chooses to be attracted to fucking minors. Which is true, but there's bad actors out there desperately trying to make your average person conflate us with p***iles. Because a lot of people are generally speaking okay with threats of violence against those who pose a threat to children. So, no matter what you meant, bringing up LGBT people in the same video as p***iles is practically inviting bad faith interpretations and a recipe for disasters and yes there's maps who are trying to claim that there's nothing wrong with having a relationship with a child and that they belong in the community but that's not what she said look at me did she say that no she didn't so shut the fuck up <laughs> The reason professionals are trying to lessen the stigma isn't to make them an accepted group in society, but rather because right now they're so despised that a lot of them couldn't even seek out professional help even if they wanted to for the fear of having their entire life completely destroyed. On some level, she seems to be aware that we're in desperate need of studies on minor attracted people. And lastly, I'm going to show you an array of different articles in the scientific community which actually focus on structural, hormonal, white and grey matter defects and in some way differentiations and anomalies in p people, in offending people, in people who have been taken from pr prisons, put into an fMRI or an MRI scanner and had their brains looked at. And a lot of the time there is structural differences. Again, this kind of gets sticky because first of all, how do you take participants unless they have already offended? You cannot simply put out a survey and be like, hey, are you attracted to, you know, minors? And how many people do you think are going to be like, oh yeah, have you ever acted upon this urge? Oh yeah, who do you think is going to say that? It's so inc incredibly difficult to make these kinds of studies, even though they are incredibly needed. Um, they are very needed because how do you find out what percentage of the population has some kind of urge? We need studies to know why it happens how to prevent it, and how they can most effectively control these urges. And to do that, we need to stop reacting solely based on emotions and recognize the difference between minor attracted people who haven't done anything and child sexual abusers. Especially in response to those trying to change the minds of mental health practitioners. Cause to do so is to perpetuate this evil circle of child abuse. 
face. You might feel good about yourself. You might feel like you're doing something good by standing up against the one thing everyone under the sun can agree is bad. But that's not gonna solve or improve anything. Though I can't say that I'm surprised that this is how Sarah goes about it. She has spent years completely bashing Amberlynn Reed under the guise of professionalism and advice. If that's how you want to spend your limited time on this godforsaken earth, then be my guest. But don't turn around and feign surprise that Amberlynn is getting worse when all you've done is basically bullying her. You're a bully, that's what you are. Here's a video of her crying about how fat she is, how she's gonna die, how she is advising everyone to never want to be like her. How incredibly privileged she has been and lucky she has been to be able to kill herself on camera for thousands. Amberlynn Reed is a very, very, very disgusting person. You uneducated, single, brain-celled buffoon. Honestly, you absolute moron. She's actively crying crocodile tears, whilst begging for sympathy, and she has been for a few years now. What I want is heart-hitting therapy. Let's talk about my trauma. Teach me some cognitive therapy. No. You were so excited to write it down in pretty cursive letters that you go into college and you're doing this, but when time actually comes to get off your ass and do something like apply to college, you are no longer interested. No one's making you cry. If they're asking you questions and the answers are making you cry, that's not your therapist making you cry. Bro, if this was my therapist, I would just kill myself, honestly. I was kind of debating how I would go about this video. I know if I were to reach young Dom Honeybun, I would have to be much more empathetic and kinder in my approach, much more forgiving. Grilling someone is only gonna turn them defensive, but I'm also a strong believer in giving someone a taste of their own medicine, and Sarah is the perfect candidate. Especially after demonstrating to me that she's in bad faith by purposely excluding in context while referencing CSA primary prevention to make it seem like they're pushing a pro p agenda when in reality they're just pro prevention. Instead I'm hoping to reach out to potential watchers. If you watch her please reconsider and at least know what you're supporting. You're supporting someone who's pushing anti-LGBTQ plus rhetoric at a critical time where there's a massive push to label our very existence, grooming and child predation. Her saying that she supports us means absolutely nothing when she doesn't care to speak out against the injustices we're currently facing, but would rather attempt to divide us by focusing on insignificant things that don't matter in the grand scheme of things. That goes for any content creator you watch. That's about all I had to say. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments if you made it this far into the video. Remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. It, it really helps the channel out. Follow me on Twitter. You'll find my commission sheet for headshots in my pinned tweet. You can also help me out financially by supporting me through Ko-Fi. All the links in the description. That's all. Take care. Bye.